Hey YouTube, if you enjoy these videos, please like, share, and subscribe for more Exploring the American Frontier. In the early days of Southwest Pennsylvania history, a number of battles ensued for control over the confluence of the three rivers in what is now downtown Pittsburgh. You likely know about George Washington's mishap at Fort Necessity in the Laurel Highlands that is considered the start of the Seven Years' War. You may also know about the Forbes campaign that passed through Fort Ligonier in order to capture Fort Duquesne a short time later. But the Battle of Bushy Run during Pontiac's Rebellion may be one that you have not heard much of, and if so, a trip to Jeanette should be on your radar. Much like how other local sites played a key part in the start of wars that shaped the modern life as we know it, Bushy Run Battlefield played an integral part in the outcome of Pontiac's Rebellion. Tensions between the British and Native Americans rose after the British began violating the Treaty of Easton. The Treaty of 1758 was an attempt to ensure that the Native American tribes would not fight alongside the French in the French and Indian War in exchange for allowing native control of the land west of the Alleghenies and limiting British trade practices, to name a few. Shortly after the French and Indian War ended in 1763, the Native American tribes were worried that the British would further disregard their end of the treaty and decided to go to war. Led by Pontiac, the warriors attacked many forts in the frontier and made their way towards the Alleghenies in the east. Their campaign extended where it reached Fort Pitt, Fort Ligonier, and other nearby forts. It was at this point that a group of war-battered British soldiers under the command of Colonel Henry Banquet marched west to aid of Fort Pitt and were ambushed at Bushy Run, about 30 miles east on August 5, 1763. During the first day of the battle, the British suffered a major defeat. They regrouped, outsmarted the Native Americans, and defeated them on August 6th, before continuing their push to aid Fort Pitt, which was successful. This resulted in the reconnection with the frontier due to Fort Pitt's strategic location, as well as an expansive field marking the site of the battle, which ultimately contributed to the end of Pontiac's Rebellion a few months later. Today, Bushy Run Battlefield is a state park and is home to a gorgeous, albeit small, museum. A visit to the museum can be quite brief. However, you will do well by having a guided tour from a member of staff, included with the admission, of course, who can bring the rebellion's history to life, as many of the details leading up to the battle are just as important as the battle itself. Luckily enough, Michael Toussaint, the museum facilitator at Bushy Run, made a few clips to formally introduce us to what it's like on a museum tour. Let's send it over to Michael and Jeanette. Hi, my name is Michael Toussaint. I'm the museum facilitator here at Bushy Run Battlefield. I'm currently standing here in our visitor center as something special. We've decided to try to bring Bushy Run straight to you in your homes. We hope that you enjoy these tours and that they encourage you to bring your friends and family here to the site to visit us. Welcome to the Bushy Run Battlefield Museum. Here in 1763, Native Americans who had occupied the country for generations were being squeezed out by the influx of immigrants and the expansion of colonial interests onto their lands. As a result, Native American warriors fought the British Army for control of the frontier that was to become Western Pennsylvania. The Battle of Bushy Run on August 5th and 6th, 1763, helped shape the future of the American frontier. In the first alcove of our museum, we have several figures representing those who fought here in 1763. Let's take a look. First, we have a Native American warrior with red and black body paint, which represent war and death, respectively. The black would typically be made from bear fat mixed with ashes from their fires. The red paint consists of ground hermitite or red ochre mixed with a liquid base. This warrior, as we can see here, has several items on his person, including a scalping knife, likely to have come from a train post made of leather and porcupine needles for decoration. He is also carrying a smooth bore musket, most likely obtained at a French trading post, and a hand-carved weapon of war 
that could deliver an immediate death blow to an intended victim when swung with great strength. This Native American warrior is also wearing leggings, known as gaiters, that would be made of deer hide or some other cloth material if they were able to obtain it from a trading post. These were placed on the legs to protect them from the undergrowth and insects. Next, we have our soldier from the 60th 1st Battalion, formed in 1756 under Colonel Henry Bouquet, the leader of the British forces at this battle. There were only 16 men from the 60th at the Battle of Bushy Run, and 12 died on the first day of this two-day battle. Following our 60th soldier, we have our Scottish soldier, who would have been part of either the 42nd or 77th Battalion. Now, many men suffered from malaria, yellow fever, or smallpox at this time, including our soldier here. As you can see, he has scars on his face from smallpox. Normally, these soldiers carry roughly 60 pounds of equipment, including their musket, a blanket, a haversack to ca carry their supplies, a canteen, and a battalion box. Now to our right, around the corner of the museum, we see another Native American and soldier conversing with one another. This Native American is wearing English clothing obtained through trading. He is interacting with another soldier who holds the rank of officer. This is evidenced by his ornamental sword and various gold pieces, as well as his sash. This sash would be used to carry him off of the battlefield if he would get wounded. As an officer, he would never get left behind. In this second alcove, we have on display several items commonly found at a trading post, including pots and cups, muskets, gunpowder and musket balls, as well as blankets and articles of clothing. At these posts, you would also find various furs, such as this deer hide, as well as raccoon, bear, beaver, manx, and fox furs. This next item is one of our favorite items in the museum, as it was directly linked to the Battle of Bushy Run. This is a pack horse saddle. British forces used this saddle to transport flour and other supplies to Fort Pitt. The simple four-piece saddle, made of two straight boards and two curved pieces, was found near Bushy Run and may have been present during the battle in 1763. Another item in this alcove is the wampum belt. Wampum is a traditional shell bead of the Eastern Woodland Indian tribes, hand-fashioned and strung together as seen here. Before European contact, strings of wampum were used for storytelling, ceremonial gifts, and recording important treaties and historical events. Later, they were adopted as a form of currency in trading with colonists. The item hanging above the wampum belt is a calumet, or ceremonial pipe, Europeans commonly refer to this item as a peace pipe, as it was used to establish peace treaties, at war councils, to offer prayers and religious ceremonies, and used when the tribes had visitors. Not all Native cultures used these pipes, and there were usually different names given to them according to the language of the particular tribe. Ceremonial pipes were well carved and made of various types of stone or wood, respective to the region of the tribes. For smoking, tobacco was originally the material used by Eastern tribes. However, other mixes of herbs, barks, and plant matter were smoked as well. One last item to highlight is the 18th century lap desk, or writing desk. Lap desks such as this one had hinged writing surfaces and often were covered in leather, felt, or other material that flip up to reveal storage space for papers. Individual compartments found on the desk or within it were designed to hold inkwells, pens, sealing wax, and other writing materials. After being ambushed by Native Americans in August 1763, Colonel Henry Bouquet used a similar desk to write letters to General Jeffrey Amherst, Commander-in-Chief of the British Forces and Bouquet's superior, relaying the details of the battle Great job. Thanks, Michael. After touring the visitor center, you can then head out 
and see a portion of the battlefield for yourself, and make your way across the field to a small statue memorializing those who fought in this battle. What is fascinating about the site of the battlefield is that you can really imagine what the ambush was like. The rolling hills with expansive rows of trees covering them, made for a strategic disadvantage for the troops, which ultimately led to their defeat in the first day of the battle. Picturing the events as they are described by a tour guide helps paint a picture for a devastating battle that ended up changing the outcome of the war altogether. Overall, Bushy Run Battlefield is a pretty significant spot in a war that is often not discussed as much as it should be. The local significance of this battle played a rather large role in the outcome of Pontiac's Rebellion and is a great historical outing for a half day trip from Pittsburgh. Bushy Run Battlefield is located at 1253 Bushy Run Road in Jeanette, Pennsylvania. The park is open all year round but the visitor center is closed on Mondays and Tuesdays during the week, mid-April to late October. When it comes to the telling of the story of history, often the small stuff gets tucked into the corner of time and forgotten. But the events at Bushy Run Battlefield were a major element in the turning point of momentum for the British and their occupation of early American frontier. When it comes to telling the story of history, often the small stuff gets tucked into the corner of time and forgotten. The events at Bushy Run Battlefield were a major element in the turning of momentum for the British in their occupation of the early American frontier. History shouldn't remain a mystery, and with inquisitive minds on the path of exploration, together the frontier community can learn and explore the world left behind in lore and legend and recreate a state of independence and freedom our forefathers had envisioned for our great nation. United we stand, divided we fall. Tell your family and friends to visit and share the endless opportunities in your neighborhood and get out there and explore. Thanks guys. Definitely just like... 
the worst. <laughs> Captain, boy, you have your ready. The greatest year is I don't know, you gotta put your arm in there. Imagine that you're sitting in the woods somewhere in western Pennsylvania. It's early morning. It seems like you are far away from civilization, yet you know that there are cities, towns, and friendly faces not far away. Get three coffins ready. Uh huh? Thanks for watching this video, and once again, subscribe for more videos like this one.